The second objective within this lesson is to describe present moment exercises. As we learn to describe our present moment exercises in a clear and concise way, there are a couple things that are, that are benefits of that. So first of all, when you're more easily able to describe the things that you want to do in, clear and, in a clear and concise way, the more likely you are to be able to, to use it in the moment when it's needed because we can use that language to self-prompt. Additionally, we, we, can use that we can use that information and that knowledge to teach others. So as people begin to observe you um, and you are you know, doing things in the moment to become close, to become a more connected with the present moment, diffused from those um, thoughts and action patterns, accepting what is for what it is and learning, learning from that pain and moving through it as opposed, as opposed to going around it. We can actually begin to narrate what it is that we're doing in an effort to teach others how to become more grounded for themselves. There are um, a few things that you can do to really begin to incorporate these things into your daily life. The most important thing at the, at the beginning stages is to set aside time regularly and commit to practicing. So whatever that means for you, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever fits into your life, the important part is regular commitment to practice. Because skills cannot be developed without regular practice. It's also important to remember that present moment exercises are not about just relaxation or distraction. They truly are about honing those skills, practicing those things outside of an emotionally laden context in order to strengthen those response patterns so that you're more able to use them in the moment when they are needed. One of the things that sometimes comes up when we talk about present moment exercises is this idea of, you know, um, you set, aside, you set aside time to practice, um, but it comes time, you know, it comes to be that time of day that you've set aside in your schedule and you're not feeling well, you've got a stomach ache, you've got a headache, you've got all these things going on, you've got, you know, your heart's racing and, you know, the tendency or the potential risk is that an excuse is made that you don't feel well enough, you don't feel well enough, enough to practice. And in reality, that is actually the most perfect time to practice because that is a moment during which you can apply those skills that you've learned. It might not be the most difficult time, but it's a step up. So if you, you, know, you practice generally in a, um, you know, in a calm, relaxed state to hone those skills, and then there are moments in time when you are feeling um, there's some level of distress, not a high level of distress, that is a, a good time to practice, uh, to practice those skills in a slightly more challenging setting. So you're not kind of, you're not ramping up to level 10, kind of a level two pain, you know, pain that you're feeling, discomfort that you can begin to apply those skills to. It's also important to remember that there's no right way or wrong way to practice mindfulness. It's just important that you practice. Simply follow through. Commit to doing it, schedule a time, and follow through. The more you do it, the more that you practice, the easier it will become. And at some point, you might find that regular practice outside of just general application to life isn't something that you, that you need to do on a, on a regular basis or that you want to do on a regular basis. As long as you are able to remain grounded in the present moment in your life and apply those skills when and when they're needed, then that is up to you. That is, that is your choice, that is 
you need to guide for yourself what this looks like in your life. As you are engaging in mindfulness exercises and activities, the word machine will start popping up with evaluation and self-conceptualization. Important to remember that we're not not to buy in, we're not buying into those evaluations. We're listening to them, we're acknowledging them, we're thanking, we're thanking the dictator within for their input and moving, moving forward. The more gentle and non-judgmental we can be towards ourselves, the easier it will become to incorporate these practices into your daily life. With the goal being to live a more complete life and a more deep and meaningful and enjoyable um, life as a human being. We are, we are practicing deep diving in, going deeper, being willing, and really getting with the pain so we can, we can take the actions necessary in spite of the pain that we feel because we are working towards, we're working in the service of creating a more valued and full and fulfilling life. So within the Get Out of Your Mind and Into Your Life book, as well as the um, A Liberated Mind book, there are a few examples of mindfulness present moment exercises. These, this is not an exhaustive list by any means, and so you might already have some other resources um, and you know, guided meditation apps or other books that you have that, um, that include present moment mindfulness exercises, which you find helpful. And so please feel free during in the exercises where you're describing them to use whichever ones make the most sense to you or that you connect with the most. One of the things, the first one I'll talk about that's not on this list, um, that is something that I have found to be extremely helpful in connecting these concepts and getting practice in a, in a non-emotionally um, uh, non laden way is actually during um, yin yoga practice. And so if anyone out there has uh, practiced yin yoga, it is a slow, um, deliberate postures that require you to get into a posture, find your edge like where, you know, where you're almost in pain, but it's that, that good feeling of stretch and strain and then you're relaxing into that pose and simply allowing yourself to uh, melt and, and get deeper into, into that stretch. And so it requires you to get into the pose, find your edge right before the, the point, right before it becomes painful, where you just feel a nice deep stretch, and then simply relax the rest of your body, release the tension and breathe and often what this what yin yoga brings up is that you know it's not a deep deep pain but it is a mild pain that you're sitting with for a few minutes so yin yoga to um, ask you to generally between three and five minutes at the beginning stages and even longer um, as you develop your practice, to stay in that to stay in that position, sit with the, sit with that discomfort um, in the um, in the service of loosening up and uh, rubber uh, creating rubber bands out of your tendons and ligaments, so your body is more able to um, respond and react in the in your day to day life. And so I have found this to be a really wonderful way to practice the present moment and mindfulness because you're, you're putting yourself in a slight sense of discomfort, which tends to trigger thoughts of, I don't like this. This, is, this hurts. This is uncomfortable. When is it going to stop? Is the time over? 
Um, and so it's a, it's a really good way to really practice that skill in a, in a, in a context that um, we might not otherwise find ourselves in. So that puts pairs pain and the thoughts associated with pain with present moment, present moment exercises and practicing diffusing from those thoughts, accepting the pain for what it is, and continuing to do what it is that you set out to do in spite of it. In order, in the service of learning from it and becoming better. The next, uh, the next present moment activity is silent walking. And silent walking is a really, um, it's a good one because it requires you to just you know, find 10 minutes or so in your day where you can be relatively distraction free and then walking slowly and deliberately, whether it's through your house, around your house, out in, you know, out in the um, general environment, out in your community. But it requires you to walk slowly without talking while listening to your inner thoughts and observing your environment. So again, it's about practicing and honing that skill of observing, staying grounded in the present moment, feeling your bodily sensations, feeling the um, emotions that come up, hearing the thoughts that come up as, as they do, um, and continuing to remain present and not get hooked by those. The next one, cubby holding, is, um, is one in which rather than labeling your thoughts, I'm having the thought that I have a lot of work to do later and I'm really stressed out about the amount of time that it's going to take. We're not labeling our thoughts. Cubby holding um, uh, asks us to simply categorize the thoughts as they come up. So a thought comes up, rather than labeling it, we're just, rather than labeling it fully and describing it, simply categorizing it. There's a thought. And then allowing whatever comes up to come up. As something comes up, there's an urge. So again, you're categorizing, you're categorizing those things as they come up for you. Um, which is helpful, especially when it comes to putting things more accurately into relational frame. The next, uh, the next one is eating raisins, which um, some people like and some people don't like. But the strategy for the or the um, steps for this one is to get a few raisins or three raisins, put them on the table in front of you. And then each one you're consuming in a different way. So the first one you pick up and eat just as you normally would eat a raisin. The second one you pick up and you really experience it. So looking at it, rolling it in your fingers, putting it in your mouth, you know, touching it to your lips, putting it in your mouth, rolling it around, and really feeling, feeling what it feels like in your mouth. Chewing it a few times and then swallowing it. And just um, thinking about and experience what, experiencing what that is. And the last one is the one that you put in your mouth, and you chew it as long as you can, savor it as long as you can, down to its very finest bit before swallowing. And then reflecting upon what that experience was like and how those experiences were different between. The next one is uh, drinking tea, which is, is one that I did last night because I find it, I enjoy drinking tea and I also enjoy um, doing things mindfully and, and practicing remaining in the present moment. And so as you're brewing your tea, mindfully being present, slowly you're making the tea putting the tea bag um, um, in the cup in the hot water, watching the changes of the color um, of the water, holding the cup in your hand, 
feet and hands, feeling the warmth, bringing the cup up to your face and your mouth and um, breathing in the aroma of the tea, flowing gently on the surface of the, of the tea water, feeling the steam come up on your face and what that feels like. Bringing the cup to your lips, sipping it slowly, feeling the heat on your lips, on your tongue, cut down your throat, and continuing to consume your tea in this way until it um, until it is the cup is done. Mindful eating is one that I have been practicing more regularly. Uh, because I have a tendency to mindlessly eat, um, which causes me a lot of um, digestion problems. And so, you know, because I, I have a habit of eating as quickly as I can without fully chewing or experiencing what it is that I'm eating or, you know, having a snack and just, you know, eating and eating and eating without really thinking about it and eventually consuming much more than I had anticipated in the beginning. Um, and so end up overeating, and which causes you know um, uh, stomach problems. And so I've been uh, trying with at least one meal a day to mindfully eat, which which asks you to slowly and without talking um, prepare your meal, serve your meal, eat your meal, um, you know, slowly cut slowly spear, put it in your mouth, chew as slowly as you can comfortably and swallow. And so this has been a pretty uh, a good thing for me personally, uh, because it's help, helping me to um, hone those present moment skills, as well as um, allowing my body to respond more um, effectively to the food that I'm consuming and give my brain and my body and my brain time to catch up to what I am, you know, what I'm putting in my body and feeling those, feeling the sense of fullness um, rather than eating just to finish the plate and eating to until I'm full and then discontinuing my meal time at that point, which has been very helpful, helpful for me personally. The next one is listening to classical music, which I really enjoy. Um, I really enjoy listening to different types of music that, um, that have different, uh, evoke different types of emotion. And so mindfully listening to classical music um, first requires us to um, shift our attention from instrumental to instrumental. So. Um, you know, listening to the violins and only focusing on the sound of the violin. And then shifting to the flutes and then only focusing on the sound of the flute. And then once you are, you know, you practice you know, shifting your attention from instrument, instrumental to instrumental, then picking two instruments to attempt to focus on at the same time. And once you've done that for a little while, then you know, taking that step back and listening to the whole piece of music as it being played. The last one um, that I'll talk about is mindful reading. And so this is a this is an exercise that helps it get experientially into a moment where we're able to um, be doing something that's relatively simple, like reading a um, nursery rhyme or some, you know, some simple passage, while also attending to your feet. So as you're reading something simple, you are also um, trying to be mindful and think about what is going on with your feet at that same time. And so this is another really good one for um, controlling and guiding your attentional processes to what is you know the information that is being um, perceived by your eyes and your language centers um, and then another sensation which is being perceived by your um, 
motor and proprioceptive um, sensory system as well. So the, in the activity that you'll do for this is to pick three present moment exercises, either ones that I've talked, that we've talked about here today or one that you know of or, and um, enjoy from other experiences that you've had and describe those in the, um, in the effort to actually learn how to describe them more readily so you can use those strategies in the moment when they're needed and then also teach others about how to use them. Okay. So 